While much of the attention in federal politics has been focused on the looming referendum, debate over the government's second tranche of industrial relations reforms has been raging in a Senate inquiry looking into the proposed changes. The Senate voted last month to defer the bill until at least February, pending the inquiry's outcomes. But crossbenchers David Pocock, Jackie Lambie and Tammy Tyrrell have now called on the government to bring forward some non-contentious changes. David Pocock joins me now. Welcome to the 7.30 set. Well, good to be with you. You voted last month to effectively defer consideration of the bill. Um, now you want the government to pass some of these changes immediately. What changes do you think need to be expedited mm -hmm. and why? We voted to have a reporting date of 1st of February. This is an enormous bill. You know, the explanatory memorandum and the bill are 800 pages together. There's 21 different things that this bill does, so I think it, it warrants a really good look at it. It's important to get it right. And a number of the measures only come into effect July 1 next year, so I think it deserves more time. However, there are an, a number of things like uh, provisions around PTSD for first responders, which, you know, frontline um, first responders have been trying to get this for years. Since 2018, the Police Association have been pushing for it. Since 2019, there was a Senate report recommending this and 13 other changes. We've seen no moves on that. And now there's broad consensus in Parliament that it's a good thing to do. So let's deal with the things where there is consensus, PTSD, uh, stopping discrimination against people taking family and domestic violence leave, silicosis is, a, is another one. Uh, and then there's another one where you're essentially saying that people who are part of a a big business that then goes bankrupt and in the course of going bankrupt becomes a small business, they still get a redundancy payout. We're saying those four things have broad support. Let's get them out of the way and we take time for the more contentious issues. So employers are actually backing your push to get these things expedited. The unions aren't so keen to split the bill, it seems, um, though they're not necessarily against the measures. What are you hearing from the government? I've said from the from the start, at the start of consultations for this, please don't create a big omnibus bill. They're incredibly hard to deal with. They, they take a lot of time, and that's why we've given ourselves more time. But on these things, I would love to see the government, what I think is do the right thing, look after first responders, get things through that do have the support now, while the you know, Senate looks at these. We've, we've got, I think, five more uh, Senate committee hearings. We had 10,500 in Sydney on Tuesday. These are really valuable ways of, of digging into this legislation and ultimately making it better. You know, the first tranche of IR, the government had 150 amendments of their own. <laughs> that's, a, that's a huge amount of detail to look at and no doubt the crossbench will have amendments too. So you've been hearing from witnesses at the inquiry already. What are their concerns, you know, beyond these um, measures you want to have expedited? What's What's the main flavour of their concerns about the overall uh, amendment package? We've only had one, one day. <laughs> there is some contention over some of the same job, same pay provisions. Clearly, there's some really egregious examples. Take Qantas, for example, the way that they have been um, using labour hire and not paying people doing the exact same job the same, a way of, sort of cut, uh, cut costs. But this legislation is economy-wide, and so you've really got to think through, well, what are all the unintended consequences of this? Um, you know, do Nathan Cleary and Latrell Mitchell need to be paid the same as an NRL rookie because they're essentially doing the same job, you could argue? It's, it's complex to actually work through that. Yes, we don't want Qantas to be able to do what they're doing, but what's the flow and effect for economy-wide legislation? That's one example. There's 20 other things that we'll be looking at. Have you been shocked that the government has tried to load so much into this omnibus bill? I mean, including these things. I mean, the PTSD um, measures were things I think you know negotiated as part of the first tranche uh, of reforms. Mm -hmm. Yeah, part of the, the first uh, first IR reforms, we got the list of cancers for firefighters expanded. And one of the undertakings was to then change the presumption when it comes to PTSD for first responders. They're putting their lives on the line for us in our, in our times of need. They're seeing things that you and I might see once or twice in our life. They're seeing them regularly. And that takes a toll. And you hear about the toll 
of going through that, developing PTSD, and then having to prove to the insurers that that came from the job, where at the start of your job you have a full medical. It, it, do, it, doesn't, make, it doesn't make any sense. So that should happen. And we've had this report since 2019, gathering dust somewhere here in, in Parliament House. Neither of the major parties have taken it up. We've got to see more action to look after first responders. And I think going into um, you know, the kind of climate that we're seeing around the world, we're going to be relying on first responders more and more to be there to look after us. We should be looking after them. On another matter, we're now just a week from uh, the referendum. I was wondering whether you could reflect on the tone of the public debate at this point. Hmm. I mean, I, I, I personally think this is such an incredible opportunity for Australia. You have Australia's first peoples asking for both symbolic and practical recognition. It doesn't seem too much to ask. I think we've, we've really seen uh, mis you know, a flood of misinformation and we've got to start asking the question of what does this mean for our democracy in the age of social media and anonymous accounts and bots and politicians willing to politicise an issue which really should be, I guess, t tackled on the actual issue rather than trying to use fear. I think fear is such a is such a poor way to make decisions, to make them out of fear. And I'm, I'm really concerned about what that means for a country that makes a decision like this out of fear because of all the, the misinformation and the, the different things that have been said which really don't deal with the actual question that Australians are being asked to vote on. Former Prime Minister Tony Abbott uh, has suggested today that a significant uh, gap in the quality of life only really exists in remote communities and that Indigenous communities need to integrate into mainstream society. You represent one of the most affluent communities here in Canberra. What's your experience? We've, we've still got horrific disadvantage here in the ACT. You know, for, a, for a Prime Minister who took on the Indigenous Affairs portfolio, we, had, we didn't see the gap close. And, and this is the whole point. Julie and Lisa puts it so well. If, if something is not broken, don't fix it. But if something's broken, fix it. And why do we allow people like that who've been in here and however well-meaning couldn't make any real progress on these issues? Why do we think that just staying in the know, as, as, as Briggs, the you know, musician says, we're living in no right now and this is what it's giving us. Why wouldn't we take a shot at changing things, of, of doing things differently. So it's, it's pretty extraordinary to, to hear people who, who couldn't really change things in here saying, well, we should just continue to, to do the same thing. We're out of time, unfortunately, but thanks for joining us tonight. Thanks for having me.